Hi everybody, this is James Tompkins and welcome to another Understanding Finance Nugget in which I'm going to do annuity problems or actually one annuity problem and another I'm going to ask you to do on your own once I get you started. In any case, to get an understanding out of these annuity problems, uh, you'll have either need to have understood or already watched whatever two rates commonly used in time value of money equations or driving the only single cash flow formula exists and deriving the present value of annuity formula. Or of course you could watch you know, the two lecture series, uh, time value money, single cash flows and multiple cash flows. In any case, let's get to the problem. So, you receive an annuity beginning six months from today of $500 every quarter for 10 quarters and the effective quarterly rate is 3%. And by the way, what, what is an annuity? Equal cash flows between equal time periods over a finite period of time. So at some point it ends. So the question with this problem is number one, what is it worth today? In other words, if I could take these $500 and crush them all into one single number at one single time period, and that time period was today, Given the effective quarterly rate of 3%, then what would that number be? And the other question is, well, what is it worth two years from today? Now, I would encourage you to try this on your own before we continue. And then maybe to check your work by going through this. All right, so here we go. We'll start off with the first one. What is the value of the annuity today? Now, what am I going to do before I do any finance whatsoever? I'm going to take a stand on the interpretation of the problem. And how do I do that? Well, I draw a cash flow timeline diagram. So if we look at this problem, what do the periods have to be? Well, when does some kind of action happen with cash flows? Well, we got $500 every quarter, right? So the periods need to be quarterly, plus we got an effective quarterly rate of 3%. So the, the periods have to be quarterly. So if I draw a cash flow timeline diagram, and the periods are quarters, and time zero is today, then when do I get my first $500? Time period two, right? Because the annuity begins six months from today. So I've got $500 beginning two quarters from today. And how many of these 500s do I have? I have 10 of them, right? Okay, so now these are quarterly periods, so I better be working with what kind of rate when it comes to time value money problems? An effective quarterly rate, right? And if the effective quarterly rate is 3%, what exactly does that mean? By definition, so you know, when it's definitions, it's memorization, not understanding. I've memorized that the sky is called the sky. I don't know why the sky is called the sky. So by definition, if the effective quarterly rate is 3%, it means that $1 grows into how much after one quarter? A dollar three, right? So the amount of interest made from $1 after one period. So we better be working with an effective quarterly rate. So here I have an annuity. And so can I apply my annuity formula? Sure. So there's my annuity formula, and as you know, I'm not one just to say, hey, here's a formula, take my word for it. You know, we've derived this, so you should look and understand that derivation as we apply it. So what numbers go where? What, what would go in for my C? Well, that's the equal cash flow, right? That's the 500. These are quarterly periods, so I better put what kind of a rate here? As we discussed, the effective quarterly rate. Now, in this problem, they just provide it. That's pretty unusual. Okay, they say, hey, the effective quarterly rate is 3%. You know, what, what is much, much more common is it might have said, you know, a bank pays 6% compounded, or why don't, why don't I say uh, a bank pays 12% compounded quarterly. Then, then that 12%, is that already an effective rate? No, it's a stated or nom nominal or advertised rate. And, and by definition... What would be the only first step that I could do with that 12% if that's what the problem had said? By definition, divide it by 4, because that 12% is annual by convention, so 12 divided by 4, that's 3%, and 
And now, by definition, that 3% is what? My effective quarterly rate. And, and, and if you know, that was just a quick run through, if that doesn't make a lot of sense, then uh, I would suggest you go back to the nugget of the two, com two rates commonly used in time value money problems. In any case, these are quarterly periods, so I better put an effective quarterly rate right there and right there. And what about this T? What goes in for the T? Well, how many of these cash flows do we have? We have 10 of them, right? And so therefore, for the T, a 10 goes in there. So if we put that all together, we get 4265. So here's my question. And this question is going to test how much you understand this formula as you apply it. So now, the first 500 was at time period 2. So when you apply an annuity formula, is the solution at the same time period, or is it one period earlier than the first cash flow? Well, it's one period earlier than the first cash flow. So the 4265 is therefore true for what time period? Time period one, right? And again, how do you know that the solution is one time period earlier? Well, you have to understand the derivation of this formula as you apply it. So if we look at what this looks like, here's a quick question for you, okay? What would you rather have? All of these 500s right here, or this 4265 right there, given the effective quarterly rate of 3%. Well, if you have a preference, it's going to be related to feelings and satisfaction and you know, anything outside of the boundaries of mathematics. Because mathematically, is, are these set of cash flows and this 4265 at time period one, are they exactly identically the same? They are, right? That's what time value money equation does for you. In any case, the question says, well, what is this worth at time zero? Well, is it a single cash flow to bring this back forward? I mean, back one time period? It is, right? So if I apply the only single cash flow formula that exists, well, which, which numbers go where? So what would I put in for my future value? Or you can use either formula. This is just a, a re... Um, uh, rearrangement of the only single cash flow formula that exists right there. So what would I put in for future value? Well, that's the 4265, right? That's the later value relative to what we're solving. What would I put in for present value? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out, right? That's the earlier value. What I put in for my R? Well, I'm bringing it back one quarter so I better be working with what kind of rate? An effective quarterly rate, right? So that better be 3%. And then what do I put in for my T? Well, how many periods am I bringing this back? One quarterly period, right? So this better be one. Notice, you know, the, the only trap, if you will, in this formula was what? what? What had to be true about these two guys right there? They had to basically match or correspond, right? So if these are quarterly periods, I'd better be work, working with a what? Effective quarterly rate. If this had been six-month periods, I'd better be working with what? An effective six-month rate. So if we put the numbers where we said we'd go, we'd get 4141. And so that's the answer. Basically, the value of this annuity today is about 4141. And so the question also said, well, what is it worth two years from today? Well, I'd like you to try that on your own. And, and if you cannot do that on your own, then I strongly recommend that you either watch the lecture series on single cash flow problems, or you go back and you look at the, you know, the necessary nuggets with respect to time value money. In any case, I hope this was useful for you. And... All right, well, I'll just say one thing. I mean, try this on your own, shut this down, or whatever. Okay, so we've got this at time zero, right? We want it two years from today. Well, is it a single cash flow problem to bring this forward two years? It is, right? Now, I'll leave it at that. That should be hopefully enough of a clue. Anyway, I hope this was useful for you. This is James Tompkins, and hope to see you at future Nuggets or the other lecture series. Take care. Bye-bye.